Hey, what is up guys, and welcome back to another video. Now today, I've decided to cheer up a little bit, because I got my hands on this. The brand new Shield TV. And this is Nvidia's answer to those people that want to stream games from their home PC, or through their GeForce Now network, to actually get up to 4K 60fps on their TV without having to have a massive PC right next to their living room television. Now, I was really excited to get hold of this, and eBuyer here in the UK really helpfully loaned out this review sample. And taking a look at the box, the design is actually pretty damn good. It definitely has a few things that I would like to be changed, but overall it's a really attractive unit. It has a large green LED that powers on whenever the device is on. You've got a capacitive touch button on the front, which to be honest I prefer it was a physical button as you can quite easily accidentally press the button when you're reaching around the back uh, to plug in a USB, USB device or similar. And then the top section of the unit actually has a glossy plastic on it, which is very prone to scratches and is very prone to fingerprints as well. So it's not going to be my first choice for uh, design materials, but it definitely does look very good. You don't get an HDMI cable in the box though, which is absolutely ridiculous. I don't see why a device costing as much as this does doesn't come with an HDMI cable in the box. It seems a little bit silly to me. But other than that, we've got pretty much all the connections you would want. We've got an Ethernet socket, and I would suggest that you do use this, especially if you're going to be doing 4K or game streaming, because it's going to be very reliant on latency. Then we've also got a uh, micro USB socket, two USB 3.0 sockets for hooking up to an external hard drive or something like that, and then a micro SD card slot as well. So this does have expandable storage, and you can get the Pro version, which this one is, that comes with a 500, 500 uh, gigabyte hard drive actually baked into the device. So if you want to set up a media server, then this is pretty much what this exact model was targeted for. But most people should stick with a standard 16 gigabyte version, as you can expand the storage anyway, and most people, pro most people probably uh, won't ever fill up that 500 gigabytes. And of course, it adds a lot of extra cost. Also supplied in the box are two remotes. One is a gamepad and then one is a actual normal style remote. Both of them have voice features so you can access the Android TV that this box runs. And the standard remote has a micro USB connection down the bottom for charging its internal battery. You've got a capacitive um, button that can be used as a volume slider. So you can quickly and easily turn the volume up and down on your system. And then you've got a four-way selector with a central button as well as a uh, voice activation button. Now the remote works very well. OK Google is going to work pretty well. That's probably actually activated a load of Android phones, hasn't it? Um, it works pretty well. It's not as feature rich as it will be. They're adding a lot more features and the ability to control your smart home. And you can expand this with Nvidia Spot. So that's also coming very soon. But at the moment, you can use OK Google to actually uh, search, say, like the Play Store for movies or the Nvidia Shield uh, gaming store for games and things like that. So it's depending on dependent on the application you're in. So if you're on YouTube, you can quickly find something like uh, Linus Tech Tips, let's say. If you just search that with your voice, and it will come up uh, without you having to type it in, which is a very useful feature and is something I've become to love. When you're not watching TV, though, you're going to want to use the supplied controller. And it's a fairly edgy design, if you see what I've done there. And it's not necessarily a bad controller at all. It's fairly comfortable, it fits nicely in your hand. The buttons are all easy to reach, and I didn't feel any fatigue after using it for a long period of time. But having said that, it definitely doesn't feel that premium, and if you compare it directly to a PlayStation 4 controller or an Xbox One controller, it can't compete. Those controllers are definitely better than the Nvidia Shield controller, but it's not a bad controller at all. Now the user interface of the device, if you've ever used Android TV, is gonna feel very familiar. You've got Google Cast built in as well, so if you do want to quickly fire off something from someone's phone, as long as it's on the same network, then you can quickly cast it to the screen in the same way that you would with a Chromecast. But the thing that's so good about the Shield TV is just how quick and nippy it is. It's by far the most responsive unit like this I've ever used. It's far better than the internal uh, on-screen menus that you get with the Samsung uh, 4K TV that I'm using this on. But even comparing it to something like the Xbox One S, even though that's fairly nippy, the actual applications, they load up a lot quicker. YouTube seems to just load like that and then it's ready to go. 
The buffer size seems to be a little bit bigger as well, so everything loads ridiculously quickly, and it's a real pleasure to use no matter what you want to do. You've got a range of apps, so you can look at Netflix and Amazon in 4K HDR. This isn't really that impressive though, because while the applications are a lot quicker than the ones that are built into your TV, you do have a couple of issues, the main one really being the fact that these apps are already built into your TV, so you're not really getting much of an advantage. Or you might be like me, where you have an old AV receiver, which means that if you do use the uh, built-in applications, then I'm not going to get surround sound, because the HDMI uh, connects directly to the TV, then an optical cable to my receiver, and in the process the surround sound uh, Dolby Audio gets lost but it's not really going to affect most people. But this is a gaming box, and you've pretty much got three ways to play games here. You can either play Android TV games. So, for example, I've been playing um, a Trials game, I've been playing the original Tomb Raider, and I've been playing a racing game for a little bit. And all of these games have one thing in common, and that's that they don't look fantastic. They're Android games, so they don't really take advantage of the full power of the units, and there are definitely some that do, but even then they're still not going to really compete with the latest consoles and a proper PC. The latency though, of course, is going to be perfect because it's running locally on the device. And it is quite nice to be able to pick up cheap games that are fairly nostalgic. So Tomb Raider is a great example of this. I've been playing it uh, with my father like we used to 15 years ago. And things like that is actually pretty damn useful and is, isn't something I could do on my PC because it doesn't support gamepads, things like that. Um, but it's not really going to be the most useful thing for most people, but it's still nice to have. So what most people are going to be doing is they're going to be streaming from uh, the cloud, and they're going to be using GeForce Now, which is a way of streaming games on a subscription service, so it's £7.99 here in the UK, and that gets you access to a fixed library exactly the same way uh, that Netflix works, and then you can stream games directly from the cloud. They look a lot better than I thought they were going to, but they still don't look fantastic. They stream up to 1080p 60 frames a second, so I've been playing Deus Ex on this thing, and the latency, you can definitely feel it, but it's very easy to get used to, and even the first person shooter uh, that is Deus Ex, or third person in some cases, um, is more than playable, and it feels very natural, and you just get used to it. But visually, it's not going to necessarily be better than a current generation console, especially if you're playing one of the newer titles, something like Deus Ex that's a little bit older, then obviously it's going to be running on a PC, which was better than the Xbox 360 that you'd be playing it on uh, when the game first came out. But it's not really going to be um, something you're going to praise for its visual fidelity. And of course you're going to have a few other issues as well, because it's not just the latency, the fact that you're streaming directly from the cloud means that if you ever have your internet connection cut out even for a second, then your game is going to quit and you're going to have to start again, you're going to maybe lose your checkpoint or something like that. This has happened a couple of times to me, and this is all running off a power line connection, by the way. If you're trying to use this on Wi-Fi, it's going to be significantly worse than the experience I had. But if you're using this on a LAN, then it is going to be better. But I think power line is going to be the most real-world test, as that's what most people will be doing with the box. So those are the two ways of streaming games that don't require any additional hardware. But if you really want to maximise this device's potential, you're going to need to have your own PC with an NVIDIA GeForce graphics card. Now I've been using this with a GTX 1080, and if you do have a 1080, you can utilise this at up to 60Hz 4K streaming, but any other graphics card, it says on the website, it's currently capped out at 1080p 60. But to be honest with you, even the GTX 1080 doesn't have enough horsepower for 4K 60 in a lot of titles anyway, so it's not really a big deal. And the experience is going to vary from game to game. It's very easy to set up, simply log into the NVIDIA account on both your PC and your NVIDIA Shield, connect the two together and then it brings up a library of all your games. It doesn't matter whether they're on Steam, Origin, uh, the Universal Windows platform, they should all pop up on screen and then it gives you a brief description of the game, as if you were buying it on the store for instance. It looks exactly the same as that. And then you just hit play and then it shows your PC screen and then it loads up. Now I've used in-home streaming before and it's been very mixed, but this is the first time I've ever thought to myself, you know what, I'm not actually missing out here. Because the latency was significantly better than when I was streaming it from the cloud, and the level of fidelity is far, far better than anything I've seen before, and I was just 
blown away with how good it was. This is exactly what I'm after and the days of moving even my fairly small ITX system downstairs and plugging it in and setting it up are over. Obviously though that the latency is increased versus using it on your normal PC in your native environment. So for multiplayer gaming this may not be ideal and I would still rather do all my competitive stuff sat on my desk knowing I've got the best competitive advantage I can have. But if you're after something that can stream from your PC, I think this is the best option out there at the moment. But of course you are paying for it. A Steam Link is around about £40 in the UK and while that does only do 1080p60 and it is a lot more friendly when it comes to Steam games, although there is a workaround to get other games to work, you are paying a lot more money for the Shield. But I think when you look at what it's priced between, the Chromecast Ultra, which is around about £70, and then the Xbox One S, which is around about £220, it does sit quite nicely between the two. Now, if you don't have a GeForce PC, then it's fairly limited on what you can get out of this device. And I think there are really two types of people that should be interested in this. People that just want simply put the best streaming device on the market, they're happy to pay for something that is super nippy and can do all of the 4K streaming apps currently available on the market. And then those that do have an Nvidia PC that do want to stream from their PC to another room in their house. And if you're not in one of those two camps, you're someone that say wants to buy a gaming device, I'd still probably point you in the direction of something like the PlayStation 4 or the Xbox as well you don't have as many features. If you don't already have an uh, existing PC, then I still would probably rather play my games on a console, just because then I'm getting the most up-to-date library as the streaming uh, store from uh, Nvidia doesn't have all the games that come out. In fact, it's fairly limited. There are definitely some publishers on board, things like Ubisoft pretty much, all their titles do come out on the Shield but you're going to be very limited in terms of library and if you're playing it locally even though you may not be getting 1080p 60 the latency is going to be significantly less and you're going to be able to play multiplayer games without worry. So there you go. Overall this wins the Editor's Choice Award as this is definitely something I will be picking up. Unfortunately I've just paid for my car service and so maybe not this month but it's a great bit of kit providing you the target market. It really does everything it says on the tin and it does it very well. If you've enjoyed this review, please let me know. Hit me up at uh, PCCentric on Twitter. Hit the subscribe button, leave a like on the video, and leave a comment down below. A massive thank you once again to eBuyer. I will leave all the links um, to buy this product if you're interested down in the description below. And thanks to Corsair for sponsoring the channel as always. I'll see you in the next video.